Drug overdose deaths are soaring to record highs in the United States, and the list of substances causing those deaths is growing longer, too. What's being done to help solve the problem here? That's the topic of this week's in-depth discussion with moderator Steve Shaw. Thank you, Rich. We've got a, a panel of guests here that I'm sure have a lot to say about this issue. We've got Jeff Dismukes, State Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse services. We've got Oklahoma County Sheriff Tommy Johnson. We've got Dr. Don Kyle, CEO of OSU's National Center for Wellness and Recovery. So let me just get straight on into uh, what the, the talking matter. The U.S. set an unfortunate record last year with more than 107,000 overdose deaths. That is one in every five minutes. Jeff, let's begin with you. Are those numbers reflective of what's happening here in Oklahoma? Is it that bad here or are we making progress? Well, uh, we are making progress, so I can start with that. But yes, it's reflective of what's happening in Oklahoma. Overdose deaths are up. And we pre uh, know pretty much where that's coming from. It, it is uh, fentanyl deaths uh, with opioids, uh, but it is also methamphetamine, a, a drug that has been trending up for a, a number of years sharply. Uh, across the state, and we actually see a mixture of those those drugs together. Uh, certainly, it's a concern. Substance use in Oklahoma has long been a concern. We have significant uh, need in this state to address the issue. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Sheriff Johnson, what drugs are people overdosing on? How does it break down between op opioids, heroin, meth, cocaine, fentanyl, et cetera? We know they're all dangerous. Which ones are the most dangerous and why? I would say right now what we're seeing as a sheriff's office, it's fentanyl is the most dangerous um, because it's so cheap to make. Um, and they oftentimes press it down in pill form, giving people this false sense of security. And, you know, our interdiction guy, Sitco, uh, we partner with Oklahoma City and the district attorney's office. And this interdiction unit, they are pulling fentanyl off of almost every stop. And, and just like what was spoken about earlier, it's in methamphetamines, it's in cocaine, it's in heroin. It's been used to cut so many different drugs and provide such a higher high um, that it's what's attracting people to it. The one thing that we are seeing, though, is it is here. It is very prevalent. And, it, you know, it is starting to make, our, make its way into our schools. Okay, Sheriff, thank you very much for that. Dr. Kyle, tell us about the work being done at OSU's National Center for Wellness and Recovery. What work is being done there to help solve this problem? Well, at the National Center for Wellness and Recovery, we're addressing the problem from two different fronts. Uh, on the front line, we're treating patients, uh, folks, uh, you know, folks afflicted with opioid use disorder, and we're providing uh, you know, training through continuing education for physicians in the region to get their X waivers, you know, to prescribe buprenorphine or Suboxone, uh, for example, for treatment. Um, we have virtual clinics because Oklahoma has a lot of rural areas and, and it's very difficult for some folks to drive all the way into Tulsa to our outpatient treatment facility there. Um, but through our uh, 12 affiliates around the state, uh, we have a virtual network for, for treatment. We're also doing uh, research, you know, because uh, addiction, the intersection of addiction and pain is something that we're just now starting to understand. Thank you for that, Dr. Kyle. You know, there's an ongoing conversation between how people arrested for drugs should be handled. To put it simply, treatment versus incarceration. I'll ask each of you to answer this question, beginning with Sheriff Johnson. What is your view and how do you determine how, how someone in your custody should be handled within the current system? I will tell you, um, law enforcement, I feel, is the foundation involved in a lot of diversionary programs. You talk about community sentencing, you talk about remerge and all the good programs that we have to offer here in Oklahoma County. And when you look at the graduates when they come through, oftentimes, the one thing that they all say, my recovery, my ability to rehab from this issue, whether it be drugs, alcohol, whatever problem they have with substances, it all started from that arrest. It all started from that initial arrest. 
And this is where I say the beauty of how law enforcement partnered with our diversionary programs can truly make an impact in our communities because law enforcement has to do our job. When a crime has been committed, we have to do our job and take people where they have to go, whether that be jail, um, whatever the situation might have. But when they get to jail, we need to learn to retool our brains. And when we see jail, when we have these diversionary programs that are good options, if this person committed these crimes and we know they're based because of substance abuse or mental health, have those programs there for them to route to. Jeff Dismukes, where, where would you fall in on this one? Well, I, I want, would like to add to what the sheriff's saying. Absolutely. There are opportunities for diversion within the criminal justice system. Uh, very successful programs uh, that are out there and that are highly supported from, by communities and the legis legislature. Over the years, we've been able to expand these opportunities, offer different services into the community and, and look for these diversion options. Uh, I should mention also there is a tool that's available statewide for felony offenders to help assess those individuals who are best candidates uh, for diversionary programs. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Dr. Kyle. I especially like the idea that uh, Sheriff Johnson uh, sort of put out there, which is the partnership with the community idea. Because, you know, we, we often refer to the opioid, uh, opioid crisis as something that requires all hands on deck, you know, to, uh, to find solutions and to really help these people. So everybody in the community has a role to play in, the, in assisting the, 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 uh, the patients with opioid use disorder and their, and their families and loved ones who are trying to form their, in, their supporting infrastructure. So it's a partnership where everybody has a role. Uh, I think there's room for compassion and, and a constant recognition that these folks have a disease and, and, uh, and they're people who need medical assistance. Thank you, Dr. Kyle. Are anti-drug marketing and PSA programs effective? Has the war on drugs and just say no to drugs, do they work? Or would those dollars be better spent elsewhere? So we actually utilize uh, quite a bit of outreach and, and campaigns to to address these issues. But to kind of go back to your question on the just say no to, to drugs, this is a complex issue and there is not a simple solution to this. We have to address this issue on multiple fronts. Uh, certainly the messaging that's been out there uh, in the past we've seen doesn't necessarily work. The, the uh, scary messaging, trying to use those types of images to, to get people where they are, but we can utilize the messaging correctly to help people who are wanting to seek treatment, help them to understand that incredible treatment services are available throughout Oklahoma. Uh, Dr. Kyle, in what areas, if any, would you like to see the Oklahoma legislature or Governor Stitt get involved at the executive level? What can they do to help? There is a governor's task force related to opioids that I think is effective. There's been changes in opioid prescribing policies for opioid prescribing guidelines for physicians and some revisions of those that I think have, have really uh, altered the course of prescribing for opioids in the state of Oklahoma. Beyond that, you know, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of trafficking of, of uh, fentanyl laced drugs. Uh, sorry about that. F fentanyl laced drugs, you know, through the state of Oklahoma and the emergence of the methamphetamine problem in the area. So any, any policies that really enable law enforcement to identify and intercept these, oncoming, these incoming substances into the state, I think that would be a benefit. Sheriff Johnson, do you have anything to add to that? You know, the sheriff's office's involved, involvement in the community is very robust. So we deal with families and we also deal with kids. So when we talk about messaging, like things like D.A.R.E. and the just say no, I think those are appropriate in some, you know, in some areas, especially when we talk about our youth, we always want to be open and honest about what's going on um, and try to deter them at an early age from not engaging in this illegal substance um, activity. Um, trafficking is something that goes on all the time. Our guys hit loads each and every day. And, and it's, um, you know, when you're at this level and you see the numbers coming in, it's quite concerning. But 
I think if we partner with everyone involved, because it is, this is a team thing. It's not just law enforcement. It's not just mental health. It's not just our, our drug uh, programs that are doing it. We all have to work together collectively because that's when we will get the best results for our community, when everybody is pulling from the same rope. A final question for all of you. If someone watching has a problem or knows a friend or family member who is suffering from addiction, and in trouble, first of all, how do you spot that? What are the warning signs? And secondly, what steps should you take? I, I, would, I would always say, um, and that's, that's why the education portion is, is so important to educate people on the symptoms and different indicators to look for. Um, because when you know what to look for, you, can, you, know, you have a better guidance or um, a better thought process or you know, just more information to work from um, to kind of guide you along your way and reach out because like was you know like what was mentioned earlier we have some great services in Oklahoma that can help people with addiction can help people with their mental health and use those oftentimes there's a stigma um, attached to needing help and we need to make it okay thank you sheriff yeah. oh, go ahead go ahead Jeff I was going to say to add to what the sheriff's saying, I think that's a very important uh, part of this. It's about involvement uh, of family and, and people getting a, uh, gaining a better understanding of, of this disease, what it is, and, and the fact that there is help available. There are numerous resources out there for, for individuals. Certainly SAMHSA, uh, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, has information online. Uh, the uh, uh, National Institute of Mental Health or, or multiple places to, to get this information and look at signs and symptoms. But certainly when you see individuals who are uh, behavioral changes, withdrawing in, in these uh, things that, that aren't uh, normal uh, for them, it's, it's a time to, to talk to them and, and become involved, particularly when we're talking about parents becoming involved with teens. But there are uh, resources here in Oklahoma. Thank you, Jeff. Dr. Kyle, is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, thanks for giving me one more shot at that here. And I'm just adding on to uh, what was already said, which uh, is absolutely right. And there's a lot of resources available around the state. Of course, of course, people can always dial 911 if they think there's a, you know, sort of an immediate pressing problem. And if, if somebody has a friend or a loved one who they know is struggling with a substance use disorder, if it's feasible, uh, you know, have a Narcan uh, available or handy, you know, just, just, just as, a, as a backup measure, hopefully you don't have to use it, but uh, sometimes, sometimes that nece that's necessary. Um, I, I saw uh, recently on a board, a phrase that was written that um, addiction is giving up everything for one thing. And that, that is really, that is really exactly true. On the other side of it though, it's recovery is giving up one thing for everything. And that, that's really a great way to look at, at, at this. So I just thought I'd add that here at the end. Those are some words of wisdom and I appreciate you gentlemen uh, discussing very important subject. And again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.